in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So yesterday we finished with Jesus saying, um, I want everything to begin from you, Louisa, in order to form my supreme kingdom. So here is the, is the, the starting point is Louisa. And um, so, t so many times, can't hear a thing, okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Can everybody? Because seven, 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 seven. You can hear, can't you? Okay. And the translation will be done by. What? Testing, one, two, three, testing. Little block there still. It's not, not very loud. Hello? Hi, is there anybody there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I think we're all set now. I think God just wanted the stragglers to get in. <laughs> this is this is the best part uh, today. Um, what what uh, as Jesus says yesterday, I want everything to begin from you, Louisa. Okay, and when it begins from Louisa, um, I've heard so many people talk about the divine will. And they don't talk about Louisa. Uh, it's so surprising. Um, I remember somebody said to me, well, Louisa didn't want to be known, so we want to honor Louisa and not talk about her, because she didn't want to be known. It just shows the humility of Louisa. Uh, Louisa is, uh, was so humble, so little. This is, this is supposed to be reverberating. Hello, hello. I can do the echo in the stadium. Today, 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 today. <laughs> it's the happiest, happiest day. No, sorry. <laughs> okay. So what, what we're, where we were beginning is volume 20, 2, 16, 1927. So now th the whole reason Jesus begins this way is this is why Jesus came to the earth. He came to the earth for a bride. And he will marry the church collectively, but at the same time, he wants to uh, marry each and every one of us individually. As, as Jesus tells Louisa, what I'm going to do for humanity is each human being will have their own personal Jesus that no one else will have. See, uh, the uniqueness that he, he has made us, our, our fingerprints, our irises, um, our sizes, our colors, our shapes. Uh, he is so in love with us that this is what he has made. And what society does is society tells us that we have to be like this, you know. And so, you know, there's the styles that are out there. There's the, um, uh, the, the, the things that you should buy to, be, to, be, to fit in. And Jesus loves our individuality. Um, if we, if we stutter, he loves that. If we limp, he loves that. Uh, because this is, he has made us unique. And so no, no one can love like another person. Each and every one of us can love God more than the other person because of the way God made us. And, uh, this is why he calls heaven the wedding feast. It's not going to be, you know, playing harps on a cloud. We're going to have intimacy with God 
for all eternity. And every day it's going to be more beautiful than the day before. So this is why he starts, it happens as in a wedding. The bride and the groom will walk in front by themselves, but behind them comes their retinue, the in great number of those who are invited. You, Louisa, are the bride with whom my divine will wanted to form its royal wedding. So it's the first one who has accomplished this, really not accomplished it, the first one that has been given this gift is Louisa. She, she is the bride of Jesus. And this, this is one of the reasons why we wear that wedding ring. We wear the wedding ring because Jesus has uh, uh, proposed to us and he needs us, he needs us to say yes. And when we look at our wedding ring, um, we rec recognize that we don't belong to ourselves anymore. We belong to God. And no matter what you're going through, all the struggles, you know, spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, uh, th these are the ways that God is shaping us. Uh, if we have a quick temper, he's going to put us through a lot of uh, difficulties so that temper disappears. See, a temp temper is, is, is a demon. And when we feed this demon with, with uh, anger, with uh, being upset, uh, when we feed the demon with worry, when we feed another demon with fear, when we fear and feed another demon with anxiety, we keep that demon alive in us. I mean, Father, we read Father Rippinger's book on, uh, you know, the deliverance for the lay people. It's, it's not that you're exercising. But you're realizing that uh, we have been shaped, we have been formed uh, throughout our whole life by our family, our friends, our neighbors, our coworkers, our, co our coaches, our uh, policemen, our, sh our sheriffs, our uh, judges. We've been formed, our teachers. And, and a lot of times, most of the time, there is some sort of corruption in because we're a fallen nature. And what Jesus wants to do is heal us of all that formation and to relearn, this is what the book of heaven is, to relearn how to live this abundant life. And what is the abundant life? It's a wedding feast. It's heaven. So he says, it happens as in a wedding, the bride and the groom walk in front of themselves, but behind them comes their retinue in great number of those who are invited. We are invited not only to this understanding of what Jesus gave to Louisa, but to begin to live this wedding feast with God individually. You know, when people say, you know, it's really fun. People come up and they go, what about this? And what about that? And what about this? And what about that? And, and Jesus teaches Louisa uh, everything that we need because every one of Louisa's questions are from us. Every one of our doubts that Louisa quotes is from us. She, at the end of her life, she never, she said, Jesus said, well, Louisa said, I'm really sorry for all my doubts, all my fears, all my anxieties, all my complaints, all my negativities. Because that's what people say to me. Oh, she's such a whiner. She's such a, uh, she, no. At the end of the end of her life, Jesus said, you never doubted Louisa. You never were upset. You never complained. These were all the questions that the, those that would read the writings would have. And I gave them to you so that you, I could explain to you what they need to hear and you would put it down on paper. You've heard people say, any question you have is answered in the book of heaven. And it's true. If you're reading and all of a sudden you go, what is this? That's... And then Louisa says a little later, what is this? It's our question. We tortured Louisa by our doubts, our worries, our fears, our anxieties, our complaints. When we, like we kept on saying yesterday, who is this Louisa Picaretta? She is, she is the first bride of Christ. Our Lady is the bride of, of God. But the first bride of Christ is Louisa. And, and this, is what, this is what Jesus says. You, Louisa, are the bride with whom my divine will wanted to form its royal wedding. 
and all feel honored, all feel triumphant to attend the wedding and to participate in the nuptial banquet of this supreme will of mine. Therefore, they, this is all of humanity, all of heaven, anxiously await your acts, Louisa, your invitations, Louisa, your calls, Louisa, so as to come and sit at the banquet and celebrate the two spouses. Therefore, you, Louisa, go in the front together with my divine will before the Supreme Majesty. My works follow you, you behind. And this happens with the divine justice because in creating all things, it is to the creature Louisa that we gave supremacy over all our works. This, again, this is important. Adam failed. A human being failed. He, he had this gift of the divine will and he failed. Jesus and Mary come to earth as the new Adam and the new Eve and they take our place dying on Calvary. And Jesus tells us that Mary would have died if it wasn't for the divine will. Watching her son could be crucified, dying a horrible death. She would have died as well, but the divine will kept her alive. This, this true life of Jesus, this true life of Mary has been given to Louisa. This is why she suffered so much to pray for us to be in God's image and likeness is to be like the, the new Adam, Jesus, and the new Eve, Mary. The saints didn't have this. The saints learned how to do the will of God uh, by building churches, by building monasteries, by building hospitals, by building uh, convents, uh, schools. It's, they, they, they did the will of God. Now Jesus says to Louisa, I'm going to do everything. So what does St. Louis de Montfort says? And he says, in the final days, there'll be the greatest saints in the history of the world, history of the church, and it's nothing that they have done, but what God has done for them. That's the divine will. God is doing this. We're saying fiat. When the angel came to Mary and said, you're going to be the mother of God, she says, how can this be? I've already proclaimed, I already promised I'd be a virgin. I'm not going to know man. How can I become the mother of God? And the angel said, it will be through the power of the Holy Spirit. And she said, fiat mihi. Yes, let it be done as you wish. Let it be done as you say. God did 100% of the work. All she said was fiat. When God said, fiat lux, let there be light. The universe was created in an instant, a microsecond. Now Jesus says, this is our turn. This is why he wants us to be in his image and likeness. When we say fiat voluntas tua, may your kingdom reign in me, in this dust, on earth, as it is in heaven. God goes, good. Now you're, you're going to re-enter into my image and likeness. So that's why he says very, very clearly. He says, um, by divine justice in creating all things, it is to the creature Louisa, that we gave supremacy over all our works in the place of Adam. And Jesus says to Louisa in the writings, now that I've given you this gift, you have to give it back to the man. As Eve took this away from the man, I give my daughter this gift so that you can give it back to the man so that everything can be back in order again. Who is this Louisa Picaretta? that nobody knows about. Who is she? That is to the creature Louisa in whom our divine fiat was to reign fully, not to the creature degraded by her human will. See, God can't give the gift, this gift to us at this point in the fullness because we're degraded. Yes, we have been redeemed, but we're miserable human beings. I mean, it shows it very clearly. You wake up in the morning, you go, praise God, and somebody steps on your toe, and you go, uh. <laughs> it's No, it's, it's fiat. Louisa was free of all that. She's the first one, the firstborn, to be free. And, and when Father Bucci would go to visit her uh, when he was a little boy, he said he would go in, and he said her eyes 
were of heaven. Her, her nature was, was peace, joy, and happiness. No matter what she had to go through. Again, could you imagine laying in bed for 70 years? Laying in bed, not eating, drinking, or sleeping for 70 years. Yet she was peaceful. This was her test. What do we have to go through? A little difficulty, not much. Some of us have to limp. Some of us has to, can't see. Some of us can't hear. It's just the little things that we're going through. And, and what God is doing is he's, he's recreating us in that suffering. Uh, some of the most interesting children that I have ever met were at camp, and they were the ones that were hurting the most. And they were, it was just astonishing to talk to them. They were filled with peace. They were filled with joy. They were filled with happiness. And they were suffering a lot. Suffering brings tr a true reality of who we are. So here Jesus says, this one, Louisa, is the last of all and has no right, excuse me, this one is the last of all and has no right or communication while the creature Louisa, in whom my divine will reigns, has the right to be the first one to call everyone to be, the, to be followered, followed by everyone. So she gives the example of how to be married to God. She is the first one. And, and now all of us, the, the, the thing that's going to happen is all of us are going to be married to God. That's what God wants. He doesn't want, you know, to be, to um, have any strangeness, any, any um, distance uh, from him. He wants us to, to uh, really fall, so, so much fall in love with God that we long for him. You know, and that's why he, he gives the, 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 the parable of the, 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 the faithful virgins and the unfaithful virgins, the smart virgins and those that were not. We have to prepare. What, why are we here? It's to marry God. Why are we here at church? It's to fall in love with God. What, 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 what is the whole reason for this universal life, this Catholic life, is to prepare ourselves for the wedding feast, heaven. That's why we're here, heaven. God is getting us ready for this great event that's going to happen to each and every one of us individually as well as, as, well as collectively. Volume 21, 2, 23, 19, 27. The living in my divine will contains indescribable surprises. And, and we all know what that is. Each of us gets a glimpse of this every day. Indescribable surprises. God, God loves us so much. Uh, I remember my sister, she, she lost an earring in her apartment. And she, it was a very special earring. And, um, you know, she was very sad about that, but she said, well, Lord, if you ever want to give it back to me, that would be nice. I mean, it's an earring. No big deal. She moves into another apartment uh, 60 miles away. She walks in, and on the, on the ledge of the window, there it is. You see, God can do anything. And she says, I said, did you ever visit that house before? Never. It's, it's, God, God takes care of our every little whim. And, and when we're really attentive, uh, all we're doing is praising God and loving God and thanking God and glorifying God. That's what he says in creation. All the, tr all the leaves on a tree are in I love you. All the blades of grass are in I love you. The clouds of the sky, the sun, everything is in I love you. And he says, humanity ignores me ignores all the love that I've given. When we say I need some air, he gives us a, a, a world of air. When we need water, oceans of water. God is gratuitous. He can't stop giving. And we are blinded, not seeing what God has done.
We can't hear what he has done. That's why Jesus says in volume 35, excuse me, volume 36, the, the senses were made for God. We're to see God and to hear God and to smell God and to taste God and to touch God. So what does God do? After creation, he gives us redemption. Jesus and Mary. And, and with all their sufferings, all their tears, all their blood, all that they have gone through, the rejection, the misunderstanding, the being spit upon, the being laughed at, ridiculed, mocked, they have gone through it all. So when we go through it, Jesus says, thank God. Thank God for all the I love you's that Our Lady went through and Jesus went through that are more than all the I love you's of creation. And then Jesus says to Louisa, now sanctification. But sanctification is greater than all the I love you's of creation and all the love you's of redemption combined. That's our job. In the name of everyone and everything past, present, and future, I love you, Jesus. I praise you. I glorify you. I worship you. Lord, reign in me so that my prayers are your prayers, giving glory to the Father, filled with the Holy Spirit. So when we do our prevening act in the morning, we en enter into the triune God. We begin to be taught by God himself. That's what scripture says. We will be taught by God. That's the book of heaven to me. So these indescribable surprises are constant, constant. And, and when you really are participating with God, every, you're, you're, you're waiting, if you're not, not because you, you want it, you're waiting to see what God is going to do. He's always having fun with his children. He's leading us, he's guiding us, he's directing us because he loves us so much. I could say that wherever the divine will reigns, the soul of Louisa becomes happiest, my joy, uh, happiness, my joy, and my glory. And when you bring me the whole of creation, you are the bearers of my happiness that it is spread within it. And I recognize my child of light in the sun, my child of justice in the sea, of that of the empire of the wind, that of the peace of the flowery earth, in some all created things recognize each birth from my divine attributes. And I enjoy uh, in recognizing my children, whom the little daughter, Louisa, the little daughter of my divine will, brings to me. Who's bringing us to this gift? It's Louisa. Remember a couple of times, Louisa would say, who are all these little children around me? And Jesus says, these are the children that I have given to you that you will take care of them, that you will lead them, that you will bring them here to me. You have accomplished this, Louisa. They're, they're still on their journey. Bring them to me. So why is everyone here today? It's because Louisa brought you here. Who is this Louisa? We don't even know her yet. Who is she? Vime 21, 3, 19, 19, 27. So you, Louisa, shall do nothing but descend and ascend from heaven to earth in order to help and establish my kingdom with the divine decorum, divine honor, divine glory that my kingdom deserves. You're the one that's going to do this, Louisa. And this shall be for you of great delight, great happiness, highest glory, to see your littleness that united with my divine will has transported heaven onto earth and earth into heaven. So this kingdom that belongs to the Blessed Mother, this kingdom that belongs to Jesus is being brought to earth by a little newborn, Luisa Picaretta. That's her job. See, this is why um, if you have that relic of Luisa, uh, Use it on those that are sick. Just touch them and say, say to Jesus, you know, heal my little one through the intercession of Louisa. See, the miracles that Jesus said that are going to come from Louisa are going to astonish the world. They're going to overwhelm the world. Now, we have relics of saints and we get a miracle here and there. 
with Louisa. God wants us to know Louisa. He wants us to go to Louisa. She's the firstborn. And, and it's not a little miracle. It's continuous miracles that God has planned. Like he said to Louisa, you know, all the people that have uh, been healed 100 years ago are dead. He says, that's going to stop. I want divine healing that never ends. No more, no more sorrow, no more sadness, no more sickness, no more death. That's what's coming. It's when the evil one is gone, he's gone from this, uh, this universe. And without this evil one around, we will not be tempted. Without this evil one around, we, our, our senses will be open to God. We will see God, we will smell God, we will taste God, we will touch God. The, the, our senses will become so alive that in everything that we see, everything that we hear, everything that we smell, everything that we taste, everything that we touch is of God. And we're going to rejoice and praise God and glorify God and worship God. That is heaven. Heaven's coming to earth. Who's bringing it to earth? A human. Adam was a human. Adam wasn't the son of God. Adam wasn't the mother of God. But when Adam fell, he fell from such a distance that it took the son of God and the mother of God to come to earth to redeem us. And now Jesus says, I'm going to sanctify my people. And what is the sanctification? It's the wedding feast. To be married to God individually as well as collectively in the church. You, what's coming uh, in your littleness, Jesus says, united with my divine will, will bring, has transported heaven unto earth and earth into heaven. So when we're, when we're hearing people say, save the earth, it's like, what? The kingdom's coming. God's going to do this. Save the earth. Save the falcons. Save the ducks. Save the frogs. God's going to take care of this. Our job is to get ready for the wedding feast. That's our job. That's why when you go to church on Sunday, you dress, the scripture says, dress on the finest linen. You're meeting your spouse. You're meeting your spouse. It's, you know, I remember when we used to fly in the 70s, everybody had a suit and tie on. Now it's... Uh, uh, going to the circus. No, no, nobody. There's. See what they're doing is they're 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 trying to keep us away from uh, loving God. I remember uh, the the shoes were always polished, and now it's just ratty sneakers. See, it's it's we are we are royalty. We are. Jesus says, I want to bring you back to the divine royalty of who you are. It's Sundays are days of that belong to God. These are days of rest. Yet, for most people, it's a sports day. Tennis, hockey, soccer, baseball. And, and we, as Catholics, have to avoid that. Oh, you're a prude. No, I want to honor God. Today's the Lord's day. I want to make sure that he is honored. This is his day. It's not another Saturday. We have to train ourselves to do this. And when you read the book of heaven, Jesus is training us. He's leading us, guiding us, directing us. When we come into church, it's not, this is not a hall. It's not a place for fellowship. It's Jesus is present. And we have to, he says that. He says, I'm alone in the tabernacle even when the churches are filled. Nobody, we don't come in, we don't genuflect. You are my Lord, you're my master, you're my king, you're my savior, you're my God. We don't kneel. It's, it's, Jesus, look what he says. Louisa, you're going to bring heaven to earth and earth to heaven. What does that mean? Everything's going to be holy, holy, holy. Everything's going to be joyful, peaceful, happy. Louisa's uh, unbelievable. What, what's coming 
even the illumination of conscience was coming, we're going to recognize that we haven't really loved God the way he wants to be loved. Volume 21, 4, 16, 19, 27. I, God, chose you, Louisa. I, God, prepared you, Louisa. And I, God, entrusted to you, Louisa, the great gift of the manifestations of my divine will, the promises of the divine will, the lessons that I have given to you and to the world in the divine will. You are the one that has this no one else. Who is Louisa? And just as I had trusted the destiny of my sacramental life to my Blessed Mother, because when we receive the Eucharist, we receive, Je we receive Jesus and Mary. Did you know that? It's flesh of her flesh, bone of her bone, blood of her blood. We receive Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve. And in the same way, I, God, wanted to trust you, Louisa, entrusting to you, Louisa, Louisa, the destiny of the kingdom of my divine will. Again, the destiny of the world has been given to Louisa. The destiny of the kingdom is given to Louisa. Jesus is, is, doesn't mince his words. He's telling us very clearly, and we go, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? So what are we having for supper? Our, our, job, our, our job is to really begin to understand what our God is doing. He loves us so much. He's giving us Louisa. She's not just another saint. That's what the, a lot of the Carmelites say. Carmelites tell me, well, we've got John of the Cross. We've got Teresa of Avila. We don't need Louisa. Have you ever read anything that Jesus said about her? Have you ever read anything? Oh no, we just don't need her. We got, we got who we need. Once you get to understand who Louisa is, uh, oh, I, I love St. Gertrude. I love what Jesus says about the, the silver ciborium and the gold ciborium. I love St. Francis, but it's not Louisa, not the firstborn, not the newborn of the divine will, who the destiny of the world has been placed in her hands. The destiny of the kingdom is placed in her hands, a human's hands. A human who basically surpasses what God breathed into Adam. Volume uh, 21, 5, 12, 19, 27. Okay, I have called you, Louisa, in a special way to make you, Louisa, live in the royal palace of my divine will. And that's what he's asking us to enter into. This is why we want to dress for our king. We want to, we want to make sure that he is honored by our appearance. I have called you, Louisa, in a special way to make you, Louisa, live in the royal palace of my divine will. My volition itself brings you, Louisa, my most intimate secrets. He says that to Louisa. Uh, if you, the key, the key uh, uh, phrase, if you want to say, paragraph, is uh, um, volume 17, May 4th, 1925. He says, through you, Louisa, the secrets, the secrets of the Holy Spirit are given. To you, Louisa, the treasures of the Holy Spirit are given. So when everybody says to you, well, I'm, you know, I'm a charismatic, I'm a Pentecostal, I have the Holy Spirit. Sorry, <laughs> you're not even close. Louisa is going to bring this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The world is going to be set on fire. How? By the sacred heart of Jesus, the immaculate heart of Mary, that she possesses a human and this is going to be given to the world and shows you the grave evils, the wars, the infernal preparations that shall destroy many cities and your littleness unable to bear sight. The sight of these grave evils justly wants to come to heaven. So she says, I, I can't, I don't want to see what's going to come. See, God has to give everybody what they want. That's the frightening thing. He has to give you everything that you want. 
That's why he wants to empty ourselves of everything that is human, to embrace everything that is divine. Oh, I, I, I got to worry about my family. Okay, then call on the demon of worry. Oh, I, I, I'm so afraid of what's coming. Then call on the demon of fear. Well, this person does this and this person. Call on the demon of complaining. Either we're free of these demons or they're going to pull us into hell. I mean, it's, it's very clear. God has to give you what you want. Well, well, you don't understand, Father. My children, my children, my children. I don't understand. You don't understand. You, you're, you're calling demons and you want to live with demons rather than be free and be happy and be peaceful. Oh, you don't understand. I've got a bad leg and I, I, I'm always upset. Well, stay that way. You want to be free? This is what Jesus teaches Louisa. Can you, can you see Louisa complaining after 30 years of not eating? Man, I'm hungry. Can anybody out there give me something to eat? I'm starving over here. I, she, she, she went through great suffering. But when Father Bucci said, when you talk to her, she was filled with joy, filled with happiness, filled with peace. Remember when uh, Father Bucci's brother died, the mother brought her, the dead baby to Louisa. Dead, cold, blue, stiff. Put the dead baby in Louisa's hands and fell to the floor weeping. And Louisa says, feed him, he's hungry. You have to understand, things are going to change for the better, not for the worse. The, the, those that are afraid of what's coming are those that want the devil. They want to keep this misery. Jesus says, I'm going to free the world of misery. This is why he says, I have to give people what they want. When, remember, when, remember when Jesus said to Louisa, Louisa, I have to release all the demons. And G Louisa says, Jesus, you don't have to re release the demons. You're the son of God. You don't have to do this. And he says, Louisa, they want the demons. I have to give them to them. Let's look at how people are living. The final two plagues in Revelation is uh, homosexuality and pharmacia, sorcery. Those are the final two plagues. God has to give to humanity what they want. Now, our job is to trust in him. Jesus, I trust in you. This, he says that's the final devotion to St. Faustina, that I give to the world before I return. Jesus, I trust in you. A good friend of mine, when he's going through trouble, he says, I go, I'm going to church, and I'm going to sit there until God gives me peace. And he would do that for days. And he became happy. Jesus is here. After communion, what happens? The, the church, we have the final prayer, the final blessing, and the mass is over. Why? The church does not want to interfere with your communion. Being absorbed into God. Vime 22, 6, 29, 19, 27. Everything I have manifested to you, Louisa, about my will and also told to the sovereign queen of heaven because she would do nothing but make it rise continuously in order to draw its manifestations, to know them. This is our job, to love them and to best possess them more than her own life. We echo, we follow what Jesus has given to Mary and now what Jesus has given to humanity. See, the, the assumption of Mary, which we celebrate tomorrow, the church says, is this is where we're going to go. Where Mary has gone, we hope to follow soon. Heaven. But they would not overflow outside of her. They would remain inside of, inside of the Blessed Mother because she did not have the mandate to make my divine will known. And it was not her mission. So she kept this this, these truths, this manifestation in her heart. And even the littlest truths as the, as the greatest, as precious relics, as sacred deposits, waiting for you, Louisa, you, the newborn, 
who were to have a mission all special so as to administer to you, Louisa, her wind, uh, the, the air, the wind, to make you, uh, to make the waves of light of the divine will rise so that as they would overflow outside of you, Louisa, she might have her part in making my divine will known. Volume 12, 125, 19. Louisa, I dwell in you as with my holy humanity, as within my holy humanity, just as I enclose the entire world in my holy humanity, so do I enclose it in you, Louisa, from within you, Louisa, that I allow the destiny of the world. You have to understand this. The destiny of the world is found in Louisa. Go to Louisa. Go to Louisa. Pray to Louisa. Father Bucci says what's coming is going to be so difficult that you, you should put a picture or a statue of Louisa in your window. As soon as, see, this is in a way like the blood marching, marking the door of the Israelites. The, when, when the evil one sees this, when the angels see this, the evil ones will flee and the angels will protect who is this Louisa Picaretta? The destiny of the world is found in her. Volume 22, 8, 28, 19, 27. Only the fiat can raise the creature, Louisa, to the divine sanctity and nobility that gives her the likeness of her God. Image and likeness is what God breathed into Adam. The likeness is now is given to a human born of original sin. It was given to Mary, Theotokos, she's the mother of God. But now it's given to a human. And Jesus says, I want you to share in this divinity. I want you to begin to uh, receive this gift. Volume 23, 12, 22, 19, 27. You must know that all the knowledges and manifestations that I give to you, Louisa, about my divine will, that you write on paper do not depart from you, but remain centralized in you, Louisa, like rays inside their sphere. And now all the children of my divine will shall be invested. Listen to this. Now all the children of my divine will shall be invested by these rays that are coming from you, Louisa. They shall move around them. Even more, each ray shall feed their soul and they shall suckle from the life of my fiat. This, this God is feeding us through Louisa. So what shall your happiness uh, in seeing all the good, the happiness, the sanct be, uh, the happiness, the sanctity, the peace, and everything else descend into the midst of my children of my kingdom from inside your sphere, Louisa, by virtue of these rays of light. And then complete glory that these creatures shall give back to their creator for having known the kingdom of my divine will and ascend again within those very rays that you are giving, Louisa. There is no good that shall not descend through you, Louisa Picaretta. By virtue of the sphere of my divine will placed in you, nor glory that shall not ascend again along the same way. When I, God, choose a creature for a mission that must bring universal good, Catholic good, into the midst of the human family, first I fix and enclose all the goods in the chosen one, who must contain all the supernatural good that the other souls must receive, who perhaps shall not even take everything that the chosen creature, Louisa, encloses. See then how the sacrifice of writing shall be repaid to you. First, the good of the ray of the knowledge that is fixed in you, Louisa, and then you shall see the good descending through you, Louisa, into the midst of humanity. And again, in return, the glory of the good that they shall do ascend again within that same light found in you, Louisa. 525, 113, 1929. My daughter, this is the purpose for which I permitted the necessity of the priests, the coming of the priests, that you, Louisa, might deposit in the priests as a sacred deposit all the truths that I have spoken to you about my divine fiat, that the priests be attentive and faithful executioners of what I, God, want. That is, the priests make the kingdom of my divine will known. Be certain now. Be certain I would not have permitted the priest coming to you 
if not for the purpose of fulfilling my great designs over the destiny of the human family. So again, Jesus says this so often, and you got to be careful. It's not that you don't talk about the divine will, but teaching is giving. The, the, priest is our, the priests are the shepherds. The lay people are not the shepherds. The Protestants don't need priests. Don't Protestantize the divine will. Find a priest and say, Father, teach this to me. Oh, that's humbling. Yeah, because you're not a priest. You're not ontologically changed. The priest will know how to touch your heart. You can have the best orator, orator in the world give a homily, supposedly. It cannot compare to a priest or a deacon or a bishop speaking. Why? They don't have the ontological change in them if they're not priests, deacons, or priests. Sound great, but there's nothing touching the soul. Don't Protestantize Louisa. Vime 34, and, and Father Bucci would say that. He said, it would be as foolish for a lay person to say, I don't have the Eucharist, let me go to the altar. This is my body, this is my blood. I got the Eucharist. The Eucharist is the second, second bread, the supersubstantial bread of the Holy Eucharist that God has given to humanity through the priesthood. The first bread has to be done by Jesus the high priest through his priesthood. You, you have to understand, this is not another saintly thing. This is a divine reality that God has given into the church through his priesthood. He says it over and over and over again. Oh, I just love my friend. She, she speaks so powerfully. No, she doesn't. There's no ontological change there. There's nothing touching the inside of the soul. It's, it's very, very clear. Uh, Jesus says this over and over. Father Bucci was very, very strict on this. He said, what's wrong with you people? <laughs> he was, had a great sense of humor. He, well, he, said, he would say, what's wrong with you people? You know, go to the church. You know, don't, don't Protestantize this. Vine 34, 124, 1937. Now, my divine will having formed uh, the order of creation with all su su sumptuousness and super sublimeness uh, in its created work, as the creature Louisa keeps repeating her acts in one, it pronounces its fiat, it forms my life in closing the value in it, and another, it pronounces its fiat, and it closes in her the pains and the value of my pains. It pronounces its fiat over her tears and places in them the value of mine. Your tears are very important. Uh, a woman's tears are powerful to God. It's, a, it's another way of praying. Don't be afraid to cry. It's, it's, God knows what you're going through with a tear. If they're powerful. And, and God answers your prayers. That's another thing. It continues in her works, in her steps, in her heartbeat, and encloses them the value of my works, of my steps, of my love. And there's not one prayer or act, or even natural, that Louisa does in which it does not enclose the value of my acts. So in Louisa, the one who lives in my divine will, I, God, feel my life being repeated. And she redoubles the price in order to purchase my divine will for the good of the human generations. It can be said that there is a contest between Louisa and God to see who can give more. Do you see what this is? This is why God breathed into the dust. So out of the dust comes the image and likeness of God. And God now is giving this back to humanity through this little newborn. A human born of original sin. Not the mother of God. Not the son of God. Their job was to redeem, and are they to co-redeem with Christ? Now, since we have been redeemed, now Jesus says, now the time for humanity to go back to where I, God, wanted it from the beginning. So I have chosen one, Louisa, to give this gift to, so that she, through her, all humanity can begin to live the image and likeness of God. But this he says this to, he says to a contest between Luis and I to see who can give more so that 
my divine will may be possessed again by the human family. But this is not all, yet all. If it does not do the fulfilled work, it is not content. To the value of creation, the value of redemption, it has enclosed in, in the closed in the soul of Louisa. It adds on with incredible love. It encloses in Louisa the celestial fatherland and makes its glory, its joys, its eternal beatitudes resound in Louisa as the seal, the confirmation, and the creative and redemptive work it is formed in Louisa. And after this, in order to be more sure, it creates in Louisa its heartbeat, its breath. It makes its life, its light circulate more than blood through as though triumphant. This is the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But it's first in Louisa. A new name. Listen to this. It gives Louisa a new name. Calling her my fiat. Think of the title. In this name, the most beautiful name that shall make all of heaven smile and the whole of hell tremble. A name that I, God, cannot give other than to Louisa, the one who lives in my divine will. And has let me, God, do whatever what in her whatever I want. I told you about that one girl in our prayer group when we read that years ago. And she says, that's disgusting. She left the group. God doing what he wants with us. That's, that's gross. <laughs> Sacre blur. It's just, holy cow. God's going to do what he wants. He's God. And what does he want? He wants us to share in his divinity. That's what the priest says every day at Holy Mass. Put a drop of water into the chalice. May we share in the divinity of Christ. My daughter Louisa, what can my omnipotent fiat not do or give? It reaches such a point as to give its own right over its own power, over its own love, over its own justice, and incorporates within itself the human will of the creature and says to her, Louisa, be attentive. And he says that to us. Be attentive to me, he says, read, study this, put, put this into practice, these truths, these secrets of the Holy Spirit. Your family doesn't want it, your neighbors don't want it, your co-workers don't want it, even your parishioners don't want it. Jesus has given it to us. Read it, study it, put it into practice. Make it your life as Louisa did. He says very, very clearly, be attentive. I want nothing else from you other than for you to do what I do. Image and likeness. What we are now, scripture says, is we are children of God. What we are going to become, we do not know. But what we do know is we will become like him because we will see him as he is. That, that's what's coming. Therefore, it is necessary that you remain always with me and I with you. Always with Jesus. So may the blood that flowed upon the wood of this cross free us from our human will, that we live in God's holy divine will always. We ask this in Jesus' name, under the mantle of Mary, through the intercession of Louisa, and we pray that this prayer becomes God's command, that we all become divinely healed, and we pray this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And remember, we are in church. Enter into this communion with Jesus in your silence.